for the boundaries and excitations uh, you want to have Uh, and isolating boundaries to make sure that the current uh, would not leak out to the coil. So which one is coil? Coil is this fellow here. So you want to make sure that there is no current leaking out uh, from the coil. So uh, you want to have an excite. You want to have a boundary for the coil. So just select the coil. And uh, go to the boundaries, or you just right click on that and go to the boundaries and select uh, insulating boundaries. So that means that the current would not go to anywhere else, it's just circulating inside the coil, which is, which is what is supposed to be. As I said, engineering the, the model that you have, do not try to make it as much as possible close to reality, make it to be like the reality but not the shape not the structure so it's supposed to be like a coil it is like a coil if you do insulating okay you can call it insulating uh, underlying coil so you know what you're talking about so that's a good name for that I'm gonna press ok okay and uh, that would be the boundary that you need for that and then for the act for the excitation which you need uh, or else uh, it doesn't make any sense to have this model you have to go ahead and uh, change your work coordinate systems first uh, to be able to apply the excitations that you want uh, to the magnet or to the coil so first go to the modeler and then uh, coil uh, sorry modeler and then coordinate system and then after that you go to the set working coordinate system and then over here you want to select the global and make sure that you are in the global uh, coordinate system and then press select so that makes sure that you are in the global uh, system uh, select the coil uh, from here actually I can do that now that I named it I can easily select what I want and then um, I go to the modeler and then go to the surface and in the surface you want to select a section of the surface and for the, the reason that I'm doing that is because when you select a surface a, a section of the surface then you can say in this section of the surface I want to have a current so that's how you actually apply current that is in a closed loop inside something so you basically select the surface and then you say selection of the surface and the selection of course is in the x and y directions as you can see here I, I wish I had a better view but look at this this is the z directions and so what your surface is it's in the planner of the x and y so I'm going to select that and and uh, here uh, this is going to be a coil a terminal for the coil so I'm gonna go ahead and change this weird name to coil terminal or term terminal terminal so that would be my um, uh, core uh, terminal and now I have to separate that from the actual body because uh, the terminal should not be in the within the body you have to separate them from each other and uh, to act as an external uh, you know excitations so you go to the modeler and you simply just say uh, boolean separation you have it uh, the model over there too but that's that's the way that I'm oh, sorry modeler and then so, so you separate them from the bodies okay if you have questions about that go back to the uh, very first uh, uh, set of uh, videos in the first chapter I taught uh, I talked about the separate bodies and all these things and also yes the last videos of the first chapter as well okay so now that we separate the two bodies, uh, 
we want to get rid of one of them so because we need only one for that kind of a, a, a excitation we don't need to say plus some current and minus some current we just say plus some current that the current will go through this uh, so then we just need to get rid of that either go and press hint delete or you can just go to edit and then select delete here or you can actually delete here so any way that you like just do, do it the way that you like just do it in there and now what you have here is a platform that you can assign your excitation so when I click this I go ahead and right click on that and uh, go to uh, excitation and in the excitation what I want is a current excitation it's a DC current that is going to go through this okay and uh, let me just double check that everything is fine with this weird fellow okay always double check your result okay I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that and then assign excitation and then go ahead on the current and uh, here is one thing that you want to actually know about this uh, because it's uh, saturate there is a saturation in this defined in the saturation the fun the amount of current that you are putting is actually changing the BH uh, curve operational point and then because operational point changes the B and E field will change and everything will change so what I'm trying to say is it it does depends on how much current you're applying um, if you have a linear curve which doesn't care about that so if you double the current you should have double for example the B um, but if it's not a linear curve it doesn't work like that you have to always find where the operating point will lie on the BH then from that you basically calculate the E and B so just put put that in in your mind and this is a good thing about this magnetic study because it will it will do that for you so um, let's just uh, go ahead and uh, call this thing the coil current and just to make sure that you understand what this thing is and for the value of that since it does matter which kind of values we have I'm gonna call it uh, C1 and it's gonna be in the amp uh, it's gonna be the type is not solid it's a strat is stranded which actually is more close to uh, uh, the coil because it's like a standard of uh, a lot of uh, uh, wires that is looking like that and um, uh, the direction uh, for the current is going to be in the, uh, negative Z so um, if you go ahead and look at the direction that you have here it is in the negative Z so I'm fine with that okay uh, you can now press OK and uh, what you will have is the variable that is going to be added uh, look how smart this guy is it automatically realized that this is in a type of current and realized it's an amp uh, based on this uh, unit here that it used to be an amp and uh, for the value of that let's put a crazy number of like 100 or 200 uh, what would you like uh, amp and then press ok so we are done with the uh, excitation for our circuit now uh, if you want to uh, calculate uh, the force which is the title of this tutorial uh, series of videos we we need to go ahead and have um, to to to, count, to ask the guy to actually do that for us by guy I mean unsoft so um, the force that I'm going to calculate here is uh, the force that is applying to the bar and uh, to do that you can either go ahead and uh, find the parameters uh, here 
or you can go into the model uh, Maxwell 3D and find the parameters there and uh, whatever way you like and then you can assign a force or torque or ma matrix uh, right now I'm not interested to the inductance value of that and I'm gonna go ahead and find what is the, uh, the force that is going to be applied so I'm just clicking the force and for the name of that let's call it just force one whatever and uh, the type of it is going to be a virtual and uh, that's that's what you want because we don't have anything uh, that we, we actually we just leave this to the global uh, coordinate system and just press OK on that so that uh, way you have your uh, force uh, you're asking the Maxwell to calculate the force for you so the force is already defined but it's not automatic, automatically uh, calculated for you because it's a type of parameters if it was a quantities uh, it was always automatically calculated such as E, V, I, J and B these are the, the, the type of quantities that always automatically calculate because it needed to be calculated uh, but other stuff you need to ask Maxwell to please calculate this one as well so that one uh, was forced and I asked Maxwell to do that for me um, um, one uh, tip here is uh, the Lorentz forces that you saw were there the virtual force is useful for almost any object but the Lorentz force are uh, basically more applicable on uh, current carrying objects which uh, have a permeability of one uh, this is also kind of a deal that I don't understand it that much but I, I remember that I had that in my notes and I just threw them and you can you can uh, if you understand what this actually me uh, that's for you to understand but because we don't have a current carrying object at the moment uh, with the permeability of one we prefer to go to the virtual uh, force calculation okay uh, I, I think I forgot one thing um, I have to actually uh, what is this magnet okay magnet is not uh, the material of the magnet is not going to be the Cooper uh, I'm going to right click on that and assign a material and the material for this fellow is um, is actually a alloy of Fe it's ND Fe 35 and uh, that would give us there we go. So now we have magnet with this material, coil with the copper materials, and bar and core with the steel materials. Okay. Now um, you want to tell the uh, the modeler that what is the region that you are going to solve the equations for. And uh, before I used to have an air box. Um, this example, I'm going to show you that it's not always an air box. You can actually have a vacuum region that you can select so I go ahead and select default materials to vacuum and then I will go into the what was it actually this is create a region and um, what you have here is you can have some offset so it will automatically make a box that has that much of offset uh, next to you uh, I'm gonna have 50 millimeters offset from each side and that's a bigger box and uh, with that you can actually have your region already ready um, if you want to give different uh, offsets from different directions you select this one so it wouldn't be united, u unilateral it would be like different in different directions so 50 is good for uh, that I'm just gonna double check that the unit is indeed millimeters so there we go. So now we have 
our box here and I'm gonna click and there we go that's the red box here that is going to represent our uh, design I did say 50 millimeters but I don't see it that much just let me double click on that uh, the padding is 50 millimeters but Maybe the unit has to be fifty centimeters. What the heck? Okay, let me do it again. I just delete this fellow, then go to here and say fifty, whatever you like. And press OK. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's that's a bug actually when you say millimeter it actually don't then don't do it right but when you do it like this it actually put 50 millimeters in from each side so whatever so just don't select uh, the millimeters in the box so it will work for you and uh, now you have this and it's gonna be you see in the red box is going to be what uh, it's not red right now because it's in a very weird mode the red box is going to be what we are going to have what we will have the solution it will solve inside the red box okay now we are ready to go ahead and uh, make our analysis setup it's going to be very simple we just uh, need to uh, double click on that and uh, my bad you have to right click on analysis and uh, just add solution setup or you can go to the Maxwell 3d and then answer uh, analysis setup and then add solution setup and um, everything as a default is fine I went through all these uh, different parameters and uh, features before so I, want, I don't want to go through it again I uh, just press OK and that should be okay um, make sure that you're saving the project uh, I'm gonna do that now